People look at stories through different lenses. I have my own personal take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. Hello and welcome to another edition of In Case You Missed It. This week is even more exciting than previous weeks as the Olympics are finally underway despite the threat of COVID-19 and it is only fitting that I invite someone who knows how to win at the Olympics. Joining me to look back at the week in sport is Barbados's first and only Olympic medalist. Our special guest placed third in the 100 meters at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. It's my pleasure to welcome Obadele Thompson to In Case You Missed It. Welcome. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, after so much speculation, headlines back and forth, the Olympics 2020 are on the way. How relieved are you? Yeah, it's been quite a journey for the athletes and, and the people who are their their support teams as a coach here everything was set to go and then COVID happened and for many people that would have been a big disruption in their lives and taking them off course and for other people that gave them an opportunity to prepare for another year but we are finally here hopefully things go well and we have a smooth olympics where people are healthy and they turn up and they perform to their best Definitely and of course a lot of people were really excited tuned in this morning and were looking forward to all the other athletes competing. So you have never competed in a pandemic. Uh, talk to me a bit about how different this will be for the athletes as they you know take on a different feel a different look to the Olympics. Yeah I think it's definitely going to be a brand new challenge for them. So every Olympics has its own unique challenges. And because we're in a pandemic and not only is it delayed by one year with so many conflicting stories about uh, the restrictions that are gonna be in place with the, the latest one, of course, being no spectators. That's a lot for people to handle and a lot for the athletes to handle. There's also the, the reality and the invasive part of it whereby athletes are gonna to have to get tested daily to ensure that they're able to compete. And when you consider the fact that, for the most part, when you get to a major championships, you're doing very little sleeping as an athlete. There's a lot of adrenaline, there's a lot of stress, you're constantly thinking about what you have to do. And so to add that component where you can be in the best shape of your life, wake up one morning, do the test and find out hours later, that you, all the hard work has just been gone and there's nothing that you can do about it. That's a whole other level of stress. So uh, I tip my hat to the athletes who are gonna be there under those extreme conditions, even them being able to come in only a few days before and having to leave soon after they compete so that they keep the numbers low within the village and at the venues. It, it's, it's definitely gonna be a new experience. And I, and I hope spectators appreciate that when you see athletes, we, I'm saying we, you know. <laughs> That's fine. We, yeah, we, we're, we're human beings. We wake up and, and have things on our mind and there's just so much that we have to deal with. And when you see them perform, they're going to be juggling a lot of stuff, a lot of new things. And it's going to be a brand new and unique experience for their life. So hopefully we can appreciate what they're doing, regardless of if they perform it to the standards that we think or not. It has definitely been a tough ordeal for most athletes. Obadele, what did you like most about your time, or should I say love most about your time competing for your country at the Olympics? Well, I grew up seeing my first Olympics when I was eight years old, and that was the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles, California. And Barbados was fortunate to have a 4x400 meter relay team that made the finals. And as it turned out years later, the coach of that team was my PE teacher at secondary school. So I got a chance to hear a lot of the stories about what the Olympic games were about. And even though we don't have, we didn't have the rich history like Jamaica, Trinidad and some of the other sister islands at the Olympics, 
it was still something that meant a lot to me. More than even world championships or anything else, being able to represent Barbados and, and more broadly, the Caribbean as a sprinter in the events that we tend to dominate and to carry the Barbados flag and the Caribbean legacy for those period of, of years that I competed at the Olympic Games was a tremendous experience. You won Barbados's first and only Olympic medal in Sydney 2000. What was that experience like? And I want to know exactly what you were thinking when you were, you know, crossing the line. I need all the details. Okay. Well, we do have one other person from Barbados who medal, and his name is Jim Wedderburn. And he medaled, I think, at the 1960 Olympics when Barbados was part of the West Indies Federation team. So it was four Jamaican, three Jamaicans and a, a Bajan in the four by four, and they came third. But as an independent country, yes, I'm the, the first and sadly the, the only Olympic medalist so far. False and third was a huge relief. I had placed fourth at so many other championships. I came fourth at World Junior Championships, fourth in 1996 in the 200, when Michael Johnson set his amazing world record. I came fourth the year before in 1999 in the 100 and 200 meters. So to be able to cross the line and to, to finally know that I was going to be on the podium was a big deal. And then to know that we've been, been there, never seen our flag raised at a global championship of that magnitude before was an amazing feeling. But it was also disappointing because I knew I was in better shape. I had come into the, the Olympic Games with an injury that I sustained about six weeks before. And I had to come off the European circuit after running really well in the 100 meters. The only person in the world beating me at that time was Morris Green. And so having to leave the circuit and then dealing with the injury and not knowing if I'll be able to compete, it was also a, a real blessing to have made it that far and gotten down the track. So it was a multitude of experiences, but overall it felt like elation and even 20 something years later, I really can't put it into words completely. Definitely. Well, I want you to talk to us now about Barbados's chances at Tokyo 2020. You all sent an eight member team. So what are the chances like? What is it looking like? Well, it's going to be challenging. I'm sure most people can understand, although Jamaicans tend to be really spoiled because of the disproportionate success Jamaica has on the global stage. But for, for Barbados, it's going to be challenging. We have a, a lot of first timers who are going to be competing at their first Olympic championship, Olympic Games, and many have not made it to the finals. I think only one has made it to a global uh, final as a senior, and that's Shane Rockman, the hurdler. He's run 13.4 this year. His personal best is 13.2. He was a finalist, I believe, in Doha and He's the Pan Am game champion from, from two years ago. And he's had an up and down season. I've, I've spoken to him, but it's the hurdles. And as we know, you have to get across all 10 barriers. And regardless of what you do before you come into the championships, it only matters what you do the day of and the moment of. So his chances are still alive. For the others that we have, they're still young. I think this is gonna be a good experience for them to cut their teeth. It will be good for them to make it through the rounds. It will come down, of course, to land assignments and if they have things just dialed in correctly. But I think Paris 2024 is perhaps a better, gonna be a better showcasing of our talent than this Olympics. Definitely. And you know, you made a lot of reference to Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago. Why is it that Barbados has failed, you know, to medal as much at the Olympics as they would want to? Well, one thing, it's a numbers game. And granted, the Bahamas does have a small population, but they also have geographic proximity, proximity to the United States. So they're right there next to Florida. And they, of course, have, they use the US dollar, which makes a big difference. Barbados, we're all the way down south in the chain of islands. Uh, only Trinidad is close to South America. And for us, our culture has not been one where athletics and sports generally is a big thing. It's a big thing for cricket. For, for multiple years, you know, we've had outstanding cricketers. And even when I graduated university and I won four individual NCAA championships, 
And I went back to my secondary school that, that summer. And one of my former teachers asked, well, you finished university, so what are you going to do? Because being a professional track athlete was not something in the consciousness of, of Barbados generally. So I think it will require us really changing our attitude and putting things in place so that we become more professionally geared toward developing our athletes. We do well at the junior level. We do well career the level and, and various regional meets. But, you, but when athletes transition into that senior level, a lot more things have to come into place. Their support systems have to be more robust. There has to be a greater vision. And I know those things are on the table for us to develop. And that's the reason why I said I feel perhaps more excited about 2024, because I think we are now going to start developing things where we look more at high performance and, and other things that are necessary to developing athletes to the world stage that Jamaica and Trinidad and Bahamas already have in place. Definitely. And we're at the part that I'm most excited about, the most mouth-watering matchup uh, we're going to be seeing at the Tokyo Olympics. Of course, the men's 100 meter and the women's 100 meters. I want to know who's your pick to win and why? In the men's 100 meter, at this moment, I have Trayvon Bromel in the United States, between Akini Samin from South Africa, uh, the grass, Andre de Grass from Canada. I would even throw Johan Blake in there for potentially uh, a bronze medal. The reason I have Bromel is because he's been dominant this season. He has the world's fastest time. He's run 977, he's run 980. He's run several times under 10 seconds. And he is perhaps the most consistently good starter in the world. I, I believe he's the best starter. He has only one loss to his credit, and that's, I believe he came fifth in Monaco, and he stumbled out of the blocks. But then he regained his dominance in Gateshead. And I think a lot of the athletes, in terms of their top end speed, is matched very closely, but because he's such a great starter, I believe he'll have a, a commanding lead or at least a comfortable lead in the earliest phases of the race. And I don't believe that anyone's top end speed is superior enough to overcome that. Baker is another tremendous starter. So I think I have him in second position. And of course, uh, like I said, the grass, who is a bronze medalist from the last world championships and from the Olympic games four years ago, he's a great finisher. So great finishers, you, you never take out the mix. And Johan Blake for all his accomplishments, He's running really well again this year, so I put it because, of course, we all know Shelly Ann has run tremendously this year with her 10.63, winning uh, Jamaican Nationals. And when we look at her record, it's unparalleled. Two Olympic golds, Olympic bronze, four world championships. So she definitely, to me, would start as the favorite. Elaine, with her recent victory and her near personal best, a couple of weeks ago cannot be overlooked. And she, of course, is a double Olympic champion. She has not had the same success uh, at the global stage at the World Championships since her victories in 2016 Rio, but she's an Olympic champion. So I expect that the two of them will be neck and neck. And of course, Sharika Jackson has dropped down into the 100 and 200. She's run sub 1080 this year. She's run a couple sub 11 seconds and she's run sub 22 seconds, has experience at the highest levels. She will be in the mix. So I, I think it will come down to the three Jamaicans. I don't think any of the Americans could break them up. Who wins? Outsiders. Who wins? You're not, you're, you're not answering my main question. Who wins the gold medal? So a lot of people, this is the thing. A lot of my friends, they say, okay, well, but tell me who wins. And I'm a person who likes to look at the rounds. So right now, as I would say, I would put Shelly Ann because of her overall body of success, her being the, the, the defending world champion, her having the world's fastest time, her winning the national championships, which is a, a championships where Elaine and, and uh, Sharika were there. So I would put her in pole position, but the margin for error is not very great. So that's where I am. 
All right. Well, of course, it has been a pleasure over daily chatting with you. Thank you for looking back at the week in sports with me. And we hope to connect with you as the Olympics continues. My pleasure. Stay safe and chat with you soon. Thanks again. Of course, before we wrap this week's episode, the part I look forward to the most, hearing from you. Paul Falloon is hinting something in his comments. I see you, Paul. Maharaj Stefani Taylor is definitely pure class and a force to be reckoned with. I agree she may assist our Wendy's men team, especially in the batting area where we need the most help. Elton Peters, I really hope she stays on a bit longer. I can't imagine Wendy's women cricket without Stefani Taylor. As usual, it has been a pleasure hearing your views and I look forward to hearing from you again next week. That's a wrap for this week's. In case you missed it, be sure to like, share and comment. And I look forward again to hearing what you have to say about this week's topics. Stay safe and I'll see you next week.